All right, we'd like to welcome Madam Hadwin to the interview room here at the RBC Canadian Open. Thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the course you have played here before, and you finished T37 at last year's event. Yeah. And uh, just some opening thoughts about the course here at Shaughnessy. I think it's a great course. Um, you know, it's a typical lower mainline golf course here in BC. It's, it's tight, it's tree-lined, um, it's got thick rough, and I think with a lot of the par fours being upwards of 450, 460, it, it, and, and how narrow the fairways are and how thick that rough is, it's going to be a premium on uh, um, driving this week. you got to get the ball in the fairway to give yourself a chance. Uh, I only played nine holes yesterday and on the back nine, and you know, I, every time I hit it in the rough, I wasn't able to even get it to the greens. So um, just a, a premium on driving, and then uh, the greens are so small that uh, I think a guy that hits a lot of greens this week is going to do very well. Um, yeah, I guess it's a, a premium ball strikers golf course, and I think that suits me very well this week. So, kind of feels like a home tournament for you. You grow just an hour away. It does, yeah. No, it's awesome. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun this week. Uh, I'm going to have some family out. I'm going to have some friends out, hopefully. And uh, I am staying in a hotel. It's uh, like you said, about an hour away. So traffic and everything too, too long of a drive for an early tea time. But uh, yeah, it's uh, you know it's nice to play on home soil again. Questions. Adam, there's a, there, there's a group of you, oh. <laughs> there, there, there's a group about three, four, yourself, Eugene Wong, Nick Taylor, same age group. Yep. It's been a while since Canada produced somebody who was competitive internationally. I know you don't think about that, but does it factor into it? You know, can I be the next guy? Can I be a guy who makes, you know, makes a bit of a splash internationally, the way Mike Weir did it? Um, yeah, like you said, I don't really think about those kind of things. Um, I, think that, I think the state of Canada's future is very bright. Um, I think there's a lot of good talent coming up. Um, it may take two or three years to really see that international factor happen, but um, you know, I, I don't really think about that. If, if I am the guy, then that's awesome, but it's, you know, I just got to take care of my business and that's how it's going to unfold. If I could follow up on that, do, do, do people maybe underestimate how difficult it is competitively, internationally in golf now? Uh, I, would, I would say a little bit. Um, you know, I think Canada's golf public is hungry for another player. We had Mike Weir, we were riding Mike Weir for so long, and uh, you know, he was our guy. Um, you know, he's struggling a little bit now, and I'm sure he'll get it back, and he'll find a way to get it done, but um, I think that uh, you guys, there's some young guys that are gonna step up here pretty soon and, and take over and, um, you know, give, I guess, be that guy for Canada again. And it may not just be one guy, it could be three or four guys here pretty soon. Um, you know, Hearn's playing very well this year. Delette's always up there, so um, you know. Hopefully, we'll have two or three more guys join them soon. Just to follow on that, how important is it for the game in Canada to have that role model, that guy like a weir, someone for the the young kids, and I'm sure as you were growing yeah. up, someone to shoot for. I think it's very important. Um, it just gives you, you know, someone that does the right thing, someone to follow. Um, someone from your own country to kind of look up to and, and, and do it. I mean, personally right now, it's Delat for me. I think he's a, a tremendous g golfer and a, a person as well. Um, you know, I, I really, I played actually, I played with him here at the PNG Amateur my last time I played here was when I first met him um, and got to kind of talk with him last year at Canadian Home. He's just a, just a great guy in general, um, you know, and I hope he gets back soon. but. His approach to the game and, and the way he took it, that's kind of the way uh, I'm kind of hoping to follow. So hopefully in two years I'll be out there with him. Can I just ask uh, what it meant, I guess, to, to be the top Canadian at last year's Open? Well, um, a lot. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, like I, I believe I said something in my Friday press, press conference about, uh, you know, looking at the leaderboard and seeing Ames at, at five under and knowing my par putt was to stay ahead of him. And, you know, I, I let out a fist pump on it's Friday and I'm letting out fist pumps already. Like, I mean, it, it's, it's such a cool honor. Um, it'd be really cool to host both trophies, to hold both trophies side by side. But uh, it's, it's a very special honor in your own country to be treated as a winner, basically. I mean, I came 37th and I was treated like I had won the event. Um, you know, it's, a, it's just a cool feeling to, to be recognized as Canada's top golfer in the Canadian Open for that year. Just to kind of 
kind of follow up on that. Did you realize even before that fist pump exactly how much maybe that meant to you to, to be the top Canadian at that point in the tournament? Um, I guess not deep down. I wanted to be, maybe just to, to be the top Canadian, but it was, um, I didn't realize the recognition that would follow or, or anything like that. Um, but it was, a, it was a pretty cool experience. Two kind of quick ones here. Uh, how many times do you think you've played here at Shaughnessy? And have you played, and if you have, how many times have you played with uh, Mike and Steve? And or Steve? I've never played with Mike or Steve. Uh, I've never met them, actually. Um, and I've played this golf course. I've probably got five competitive rounds on it. Uh, two stroke play, three match play. And then, uh, but it's been five or six years, I think, since I've played it. So. Those are the only rounds you've played? Those are the only rounds I've played, yeah. Yeah, yeah I had two questions, if I might, Adam. So you've had a little taste of the Canadian support. Mm -hmm. Some people, I think, have been maybe a little overwhelmed or found it too weighty. I just wondered what your take was on it. it I guess it just depends on your approach. My approach is that if I don't play well, then they're not they're just going to support me. So, um, you know, I just got to do my thing. I got to take care of my business. Um, and the, all that extra stuff is just extra stuff. Um, it, it's just kind of, like, like I said, if, if I don't play well, it's not going to be there. So, you know, just something that you deal with and something that you embrace and, you know, keep playing well because it's fun to have a lot of support like that. The other question I wanted to ask is, uh, you know, I think as, as kids, you know, growing up playing Everybody Dreams, you know, this is a putt to win the U.S. Open. This is a, well, at Ledgeview, there's probably, well, I can think of two or three guys anyways. Who that might be very realistic yeah. for. Can you just like maybe, maybe talk? Well, what is it in the water in Abbotsford, and why why did that? Why is that course produce so many yeah. good players? Yeah, I've, well, I've had that question a lot. It's just the type of course that it is. It's it's very hilly. Um, it's very it, it's tight. It's tree line, and they've got very tricky greens. Uh, you got to put your ball in the right spot. You never really have a flat lie, so you learn to hit different shots. Um, and with the greens, you know, in the summer they get firm and uh, a lot of undulation on them. So you have to you develop a short game real quick there. And I think you saw that with Nick and James. They've got incredible short games. So, um, you know, it's just short tree line. It's only 6,300 yards from the tips. Um, actually, I think it's only 61. But uh, it's, you just put the ball in play and, and you get it around. And you just kind of learn to score at that golf course because you know you have to go low to compete. Um, and so you just kind of learn to play special going on there when you were you know playing with those guys growing up mm, I didn't really think about it until people started mentioning it um, and then as soon as people start kind of putting it in your head you're like oh yeah you know we have had you know Ray Stewart James Lepp Nick myself I mean there's some good guys coming out of the same course so. did, uh, did you ever go to an Air Canada championship as a kid did you ever attend any of those I didn't I never watched. I played in a tournament opposite the Air Canada Championship one year, um, a Maple Leaf Junior Tour event. Uh, it was being held on the canal course while the ACC was on the ridge. So it was kind of cool just to be in that atmosphere, I guess. But I was never, never watched it. As, as a British Columbian, do you have any kind of sense of loss when the tournament left? Do you, um, you know what? That was about the time that I was first getting into golf. Um, that MJT event there was um, one of my first events, so not really. I was just kind of new to the game and just kind of getting into it. So, um, you know, I think, you know, I don't see why Vancouver can't hold the PGA Tour event. We've got enough good courses around here. But, uh, How old were you for that? Uh, 13 or 14, somewhere in there. Any more questions? All right, thanks a lot, Adam. Thank Best of luck this week. Thanks, guys.